Hi all, I have a very curious and fascinating Paul Morphy going to show you in 1850, so he was around 13 years old, playing his friend James McConnell. Just a quick uh, intro here, which you can get on chessgames.com. James McConnell was a lawyer in, in, sorry, in New Orleans and a friend of Paul Morphy. Born in Bolton Rouge and died in New Orleans. When Paul Morphy was given a chess book, he would read it, sometimes make notes in the book, and then give the chess book to his friend James McConnell. James was the first contributor to the Fifth American Chess Congress, which was held in New York in 1880. James McConnell donated all his writings and collection to Tulane University. Now here, it's super fascinating this game. After e4 from James McConnell, Paul Morphy plays a French defense. Now this is back in 1850. Can you imagine? There's no documentation on the French defense, surely, around. <laughs> so. We have the advanced variation and c5. Yeah, Paul Morphy seems to instinctively know, you know, modern ways of playing against the French advanced variation. He's undermining the pawn chain. He's playing a closed position. c3, knight c6, putting pressure on d4, and very thematic queen b6. Entirely thematic by modern standards. Just trying to undermine at d4. Knight f3. And we see the great move, Bishop d7. This kind of waiting move is attributed to Max Irvin many years later as a high class waiting move. We see this in a Paul Morphy game in 1850. It's nice, you know, it means that Rook c8 could be dangerous. He's not playing these pieces. And actually, after a3, he identifies f5 as a nice square. It seems, you know, very, very logical. This is just total genius, really. Can you imagine? He's playing like the French defense fluently in one of the very few games he's played it. He's playing absolutely fluently with black. B4, trying to put a clamp on, on the queen side. C takes D4. C takes D4. But we see now Rook C8 is White's position solid enough to cope here. White now protects d4, but now even more pressure is brought to bear on d4. Entirely thematic play from black so far. Now we see queen d3 here. And Paul Morphy plays a stunning move in this position. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, bishop takes b4 check. Yeah, making use of that rook on c8. Coming up after a takes, knight takes. There's support for knight c2 or something else. After queen d2, this is a, a winning position for black. Morph Morphy just plays rook c2 here. Yeah, forking queen and bishop. What else could white? Do in this position. Let's have a quick check. I'm not sure there is too much to do here. On Queen D1, just Knight C2 check is strong, and actually that Bishop is dropping off. So it's it's very unpleasant uh, this position. And we've got discovered checks here against the Queen, for example, or just taking here. It's it's, it's totally winning. So there's not too much to do in this position. It's already busted here after this uh, bishop sack. So queen d2 was played. Yeah, allowing rook c2. Queen d1, and either black can take on b2 or what was played, which actually looks more emphatically pleasing. The knight goes into e3, winning the queen, checkmating the queen, basically. So James resigned here. It's fascinating that Paul Morphy played in such a, a great way with the French defense. He's known for his open games, but this is a great example from his closed games. French defense, Paul Morphy, 1850, incredible stuff. And a really, really powerful sack. That That is absolutely the most clinical way to play the position uh, from this queen d3. If you give this to an engine, bishop takes b4. Strongest move, it's logical, it's using the rook on c8 transitions into ripping the king to apart here. Nice play with the French defense. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.